The information provided in this podcast episode is for education and entertainment purposes only and is in no way a replacement for a relationship with a licensed mental health professional and should not be considered or used as clinical or professional consultation. With that said, here is a taste of what you will get in today's episode. We often get into these seasons where our kids are changing. They're in a different developmental phase and we have gotten used to doing things a certain way, but then they flip on us. And that's just the story of motherhood entwined with childhood, babyhood, teenagehood, whatever hood you in of motherhood mixed with your childhood. Okay. It just changes. And when it changes, it throws us off. So then we're not able to take care of ourselves consistently. Now keep listening to today's episode because it is bound to help you bloom into your best self. And of course, thank you so much for listening and supporting my podcast. Enjoy the episode. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Blooming to Your Best Self. I'm your host, Narissa Harris, a licensed marriage and family therapist. And on this podcast and in my work in general, I am on a mission to help you bloom into your best self. The topics that I cover will be brought to you in a raw, authentic, and unapologetic way. Sometimes I talk to you about topics from the perspective of my clinical expertise, but more times than not, I'm sharing from my personal experiences in life, which will always come from the perspective of a Black woman first, because listen, I'm a Black woman. So naturally, you are going to get some cultural awareness and sensitivity tips here. But overall, on my podcast, you will get some self-help tips, some encouragement, some motivation, some inspiration, because again, my overall mission is to help you bloom into your best self. So with all of that whole mouthful said, let's get into today's episode, which is entitled, This One's For The Mamas. Hey, y'all. How you doing? I hope you are doing well on this evening or this day, child, whenever you listen to this podcast, I hope you're doing good. Um, I am recording in the evening, so, you know, my tongue just defaulted to say the evening. Um, I am back. I am excited, like I said in the last episode, to just be getting back into the rhythm of recording um, and trying to get back into the groove of recording every two weeks, right? I'm still not quite there. Listen, don't come for me, okay? And I won't come for you. Um, you know, it's, it's been a little minute, but we making movement. It hasn't been three months since the last time I recorded, right? So I'm happy about that. Um, and, you know, eventually I'll get back into a constant flow soon. I have a lot of other moving parts going on in my life right now. Um, And although this new way of recording is much easier to navigate than the way I recorded previously, which if y'all don't know that story, go back and listen to the um, other episode, episode 101. Um, But uh, that this way is much easier um, to record, but I'm still kind of getting used to some of the small nuances um, when editing the podcast and making sure that it gets uploaded. So y'all continue to be patient with me, okay? Because listen, I'll be patient with y'all. Anywho, today I am talking directly to my mamas, okay? I am talking to the mamas. This episode is dedicated to us, okay? Now listen, if you are not a mom, don't you stop listening to this. Don't you dare stop listening to this podcast, okay? Listen, you already know what I'm about to say if you've been a long time listener, but if you haven't been a long time listener and you happen to be on this episode and you just kind of found me and listening to me and you're not a mom, you know a mom in some capacity, okay? So you need to listen to this episode because she might be your friend, your wife, your partner, your sister, your cousin, your daughter, your coworker, your neighbor. Child, she might be the clerk in the store in some capacity, I am sure you know a mama. So you might as well listen to this so that you can share some of these gems I'm about to drop with, with right here in this episode. And then you can share these gems with her. Or 
you can kind of keep them in your back pocket, keep them in mind. So when you interacting with that mom, you know, you can slip in a little encouragement here or there, some motivation, you know, all that good stuff. So even if you ain't nobody's mama, you still need to listen to this episode. So just, just go on ahead and keep listening. Okay. Go and do some stuff and let me play in the background. Um, so today I want to talk about motherhood. And I want to talk about it in a free, but also a structured way. And let me tell you what I mean by that. Um, The structure is I want to make sure that I talk about three specific areas of motherhood that I really think we all can relate to. Um, The free portion of this is y'all know I'll be going off on a tangent sometime. And I'm going to just kind of be free in what comes out as I talk about these three areas. But I want to make sure I hit these three areas. Um, But, you know, there's going to be some freedom in the tangent. Y'all know my tangents be good and they be necessary sometimes. Okay, Um, so let's get into the three areas that I am going to talk about today. So I want to first talk about the many different hats that we wear as mothers. And then I want to talk about how critically important it is for us to find a way to take care of ourselves. And I also want to talk lastly about just the importance of connecting with yourself as a woman, um, not as a mother, right? Because I think that's something that is really important for us to do um, as as moms, right? Just connecting with ourselves as women. So let's get into these three topics, okay? Um, so talking about the different hats that we wear as mothers. Listen, the other day I was thinking to myself, like, and I'm, I'm probably going to make like an Instagram reel on this at some point, but I was like, dang, I got I like really wear a whole bunch of hats and I'm sure it's a lot of mothers out there that wear a lot of hats. And I was just really thinking about all of the stuff that I do and the different roles that I have. Like, I just was like, girl, I was counting them up, right? I'm like, I'm a business owner. I am a clinical supervisor. I am a CE um, certified continuing education provider. I'm a mom, obviously, right? I'm a wife. I'm a daughter. I'm a friend. I'm somebody cousin, okay? Um, Listen, I'd be cleaning the house. So, you know, I could put myself in as the housekeeper. I'm the cook. I mean, we could just go on and on. What's that, about 10 right there? I lost count. But how many of us got that all those hats and like don't really think about literally all the stuff that we are doing as mothers? Like that is not our only hat. Our only hat is not to get up and be somebody's mom, make sure that the kid gets to school, make sure that they have what they need, and then that's it. No, like most of the time we getting up, getting ourselves ready for work, whatever that might look like. Even if you staying at home, let me listen. Here go a tangent. Even if you a stay at home mom, child, you still got to get up and work. Okay, because taking care of these kids is work. That is not like that is not for the week. Listen, I was stay at home for you know, three to five years, however you want to categorize it or look at it, I will stay at home, right? And yeah, I did work and I I worked from home also. Um, I still very much work from home, but there was a period where I paused work completely when I had my baby and all I was doing was working to take care of the baby. And that's work. And so even if that's what you do, you still got to get up and get yourself dressed, right? Then you got to get up and get your kid dressed. And then you got to fix them something to eat. Child, that's being a whole cook and a nutritionist right there, okay? Um, Then you got to take them out to do activities, right? You know, now you, you the play buddy, right? 
Um, and then if you also have other responsibilities on top of this big responsibility called mom, such as going to work, being responsible for other people, right? If you work outside the home, if you work in the home and you still have employees that you are responsible for or the business that you are responsible for, you bookkeeping your business, you tracking your taxes, like all of these things are hats. Child, don't add in a spouse, because <laughs> that's that's a whole nother job right there. Okay. And so we wear a lot of hats as moms and we have to really be conscious of the hats that we wear and how heavy these hats are. Because sometimes some of the hats can be much heavier than other hats. And we have to realize, can I take this hat off? Is it time for me to be like, you know what? Um, I'm not able to do this right now. And so I am going to take this hat and I'm going to just sit it on at the top of the closet and I'm going to come back to it later. There was a period of time, and maybe this will help somebody out, where I had just, maybe not just had the baby, but she was... Um, getting to the point where she was like crawling and like into everything and so as a mom you know when that stage happens how hard it is to even cook a meal because you got to make sure your baby is safe like when they are exploring and they crawling and they doing all kind of stuff you also got to make sure they not exploring and crawling and picking up the penny that's on the floor right or exploring and crawling and trying to pull out the little safety plug in the plug or trying to plug something into the plug or take something out of the plug, right? And so when uh, my baby was probably about, I wanna say six months, maybe 10 months, somewhere around those ranges, I was like, I gotta do a food service. I can't like do this. So we, for a couple of weeks, we did a, um, like a little, I forget which one we did. Um, it wasn't the, the most popular one, but we just had the little food box come to our door um, once a week. And that was like two meals that covered me, my husband, and my oldest, cause she was still about two, maybe three. And so she didn't eat that much. Um, and so I did that. I also, which is something I still do, listen, I still do this. I also began what they like to call the fancy term outsourcing. So, you know, getting the, um, the food delivered, that's outsourcing. Um, and then I decided like when my oldest was six months, I was like, I cannot keep this house clean. And for me, I am a woman who cannot function in a messy house like everything don't have to be perfect everything don't have to be labeled color coded and categorized like I'm I don't it don't have to be that deep for me but I can't with mess like it really sends me to a place and so when my oldest was six months I had a lady come she looked at our house um and she I showed her the stuff that I needed and she cleaned our house for us and it wasn't something that I could do every week or once a month because you know when I had my first uh, daughter I tapered down with work a little bit I had did some contract work but I wasn't working as much even though I was still working and so we had to be mindful of finances um but let me tell you she has been cleaning my house ever since sometimes she come once a month sometimes she come every couple of months and just do a deep deep clean for me where she'll do the baseboard she'll clean off the cabinet she'll wipe down all the appliances and that's listen that's what i did because i couldn't wear the hat of chef and housekeeper i just i wasn't doing it at that point and so i say all that to say sometimes we have to interchange the hats that we wear at that particular time in my life as a mom, the hat of a mother and a caregiver was the most important hat. So I had to take off chef consistently for a while. And ever so often I would take off the hat of housekeeper and I just outsourced that, right? And so we have to know when it's time to put these hats up and put them on the top of our shelf, right? We don't need to be wearing four, five, six hats all the time. And number one, you're gonna be hot, okay? If we sticking with the metaphor of 
Hats, you gonna be hot if you got all those hats on your head, even if it's the dead of winter, okay? You gonna be hot and you gonna need to take them hats off. And so we have to learn when to put the hat up and when to take it back down, right? Um, I have gotten back into the season. I've been back into it for a long time where, you know, I'm mom and I be chef sometime, okay? I be in here cooking up some stuff, but I also enjoy cooking. And so sometimes that's a hat that I'm like, all right, you know, I could wear this and I can be a little bit more intentional with my nutritional efforts for the family, right? And so that's all I want to say is let's just think about the hats that we are wearing as moms, um, how heavy each hat is, right? And knowing when to interchange your hat and when to sit some hats up. Put them hats on the, the top shelf in the closet. Child, hang them on the hat rack. Whatever you need to do, take the hat off if it's too much, all right? So that's what I want to say about that. Um, let's talk about how crucially important it is for us to find a way to take care of ourselves. Listen, oh Lord, I'm going to come all up and down your row when I talk about this. And I might get on your nerves a little bit because I'm going to get on my own nerves. Because let me tell you, I don't share nothing with y'all that... I don't be telling myself or that I don't be practicing, okay? And this one is just hard. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. Ooh, it's hard as a mom to find ways to take care of yourself. But like not just ever so often, but like finding ways to take care of yourself consistently. It is so, and I keep saying crucial on pork, on, and, and on purpose. Look, I'm over here stuttering, okay? <clears throat> it is so important, crucially important, for us to take care of ourselves. Like, if we don't take care of ourselves, we literally are pouring from an empty cup. And I say this all the time. I know I keep talking about it. I always am, am saying, you know, the importance of us taking care of ourselves. And I know I keep saying and reiterating the same thing all the time, but I'm going to keep doing it because it's something we need to be reminded of as moms. And we need to be reminded of it constantly because we often get into these seasons where our kids are changing. They're in a different developmental phase and we have gotten used to doing things a certain way but then they flip on us and that's just the story of motherhood entwined with childhood babyhood teenagehood whatever hood you in of motherhood mixed with your childhood okay it just changes and when it changes it throws us off so then we're not able to take care of ourselves consistently but if we don't take care of ourselves there are two things I always like to just reiterate and say, as mothers, if we don't take care of ourselves, we again essentially are pouring from an empty cup. And so that means we are not taking care of our children to the best of our ability. And I know that the moms on here listening, listen, you wouldn't be listening to my podcast if you wasn't a mom that was trying to do the best that you could by your kid, right? Even if you have rough moments as a mother, um, the fact that you are like tuned in to me, you probably tuned into my newsletter. Are you tuned into my newsletter? Because if you're not, God, like, girl, why? Uh, the newsletter is free. I don't know why you ain't signed up, but you need to. Anyway. I say all that to say, if you follow my work, that I'm pretty sure that you are a great mom. You're trying to be the best mom that you can be. You're trying to do all that you can do to take care of you, take care of your baby. And if you ain't taking care of yourself, you're just really not taking care of your baby. Because then you pouring from an empty cup. You are not giving your kid the best version of you. 
And that means that you not caring for your kid the best way possible. Now, listen, I know that's, I know you probably rolling your eyes and you being like, girl, please. But I'm telling you the truth and you know it's the truth. If you are stressed out, if you are tired, if you can't remember the last time you did something to take care of yourself and then all you're doing is taking care of your kid, making sure your kid got all that they need, you're going to feel depleted. And then eventually you're going to start feeling resentful. And then you're going to be the mom that's fussing or losing her temper for no reason. And we don't want to be that mom. We don't want to be her, right? And so I just want to give y'all some encouragement. I just want to give y'all a few tips, just a few, like some tiny things that you can do um, to take care of yourself. If you only have a few minutes, if you have more than a few minutes, if you have a ton of time, okay, I'm going to give y'all, I'm going to give y'all three little examples because we got to consistently take care of ourselves. And so what I want you to do when I'm giving these examples is keep in mind how you can interchange these things. Like, is that going to be a theme? Because I'm talking about interchanging the hats that we wear. And we also need to talk about interchanging the time that we have and the amount of time that we have to take care of ourselves, right? So let's just say you got a little bit of time just to yourself. Like no kids, either your partner got the kids, the kids are at school, like a family member got the kids. Let's just say you got nothing but time to yourself, right? Um, if Let's say you got five minutes or 10 minutes. Is some stuff that you can do in that time frame to just take care of yourself. The first could be just to be still. If all you got is five minutes, just sit in the quiet and the physical stillness of that moment. Just allow yourself to just sit for five minutes and do nothing. Don't try to think about what we're going to cook, what, what you need to make on the grocery list. You know, don't start getting up thinking that you can just do this, this and that in those few minutes. Just sit, girl, just sit down just for five minutes in the quiet. You will be amazed at what can happen with the rest of your day if you just took five minutes to yourself in some quiet and some stillness, okay? Um, That's just one little thing you can do. Another thing you can do in like five, 10 minutes is just take in some fluid, right? Drink you some water or some tea or some coffee. But while you're doing it, like really take a moment to just feel how it feels going down your throat, right? Like, is it cold? Is it hot? You know, what does it taste like? And just allow yourself to just drink something for five minutes without a little person wanting some or without a little person crying and now you got to put your drink down. Just take five minutes to just hydrate, okay? Now, let's say you over in the the land of luxury, okay, and that you got about 20 minutes just to yourself. Girl, if you don't go sit down and eat you a meal, listen, we go combine the two. We're going to sit still and we're going to drink something and hydrate ourselves and we're going to eat. Like, just, just, just eat you a meal uninterrupted. Like, you can do that in 20 minutes without having to shove the food down your throat all fast, right? That's one thing that you can do. But let's say, let's say you done hit the lottery in terms of a long time and you got 30 to 45 minutes to yourself. Girl, reward yourself by like taking a bath. You can go get you a little treat or something and just kind of eat it off to yourself. Um, You can do pick up a little quick breakfast or a quick little lunch with 30 to 45 minutes. Um, You can take a bath. You can watch a show, right? You can do your hair, okay? Like you can wash, condition, and you can quickly style your hair, okay? Depending on the texture, you can just take a moment to kind of do that without it being rushed. Listen, you can take a nap. Yes, yes, I did. I said you could take a nap. You can take a nap in 30 to 45 minutes and you can rejuvenate your whole soul which will then rejuvenate your whole everything in regards to taking care of that child okay so that's just some stuff that you can do if you have a little bit of time if you have a little bit more time if you got tons of time okay and just a little shameless plug if you like that um, and these ideas, I got a whole bunch of all of that type of stuff in my workbook that is just for moms and it is called 
a mommy's guide to taking care of herself. And I will leave the link in the show notes. Um, I give tips on ways that you can take care of yourself when you um, are just by yourself. But I also got a whole section in here of what you can do to take care of yourself even when your kids are with you, okay? So don't sleep on the um, digital workbook, honey. Go on ahead and get that for yourself. You can find it on my website. Um, I'm gonna take a break. And I'm going to let all of this sink in for y'all because this episode is getting a little longer than I would like it to be. You know, I like to listen to what y'all say, which is you like short episodes. So I'm going to try my best to go through this last section just a little quicker, just a little bit. Um, Because again, y'all like the short sessions and we already at about 20, 25 minutes. Okay. And we just in the first half. And so the second half is going to be really short because again, I be wanting to respect y'all listen to what y'all have to say about liking the shorter episodes. If you are liking episodes that are a little bit longer though, y'all can always let me know. Anyway, I'm about to take a break. You already know what to do on these breaks, right? You know what to do. Go on, get you a snack. Um, use the restroom, change your position, get yourself comfortable. But whatever you do, I want you to come back so that you can hear, um, or not even come back, I want you to pay attention, right? So that you can hear the Black historian that I'm going to read about and see what they did um, historically. And don't zone out so that you can find out (laughs) about what they did, all right? I'll be right back. General Benjamin O. Davis, Sr., 1877 to 1970, the first black American to become a general in the United States Army was Benjamin Oliver Davis, Sr. In a military career that spanned 50 years, Davis saw action in the Spanish-American War, World War I, and World War II. Davis was born in Washington, D.C. on June 1, 1877, the grandson of a slave who had bought his own freedom in 1800. His father, Louis P. H. Davis, was a messenger in the Department of Interior in Washington. The primary task for overseeing the boy's upbringing fell on his mother, Henrietta. Davis was raised in Washington, D.C., where he attended public schools. It was while attending Howard University that he visited the Army base at nearby Fort Myer, Virginia, and was drawn to military life. If you want to know more, I encourage you to do your cultural homework so that you can bloom into your best self. All right, y'all, I am back and I want to spend the second half of the show really getting into the final point that I want to talk about today, which is the importance of connecting with yourself as a woman, right? And I'm going to talk about this in terms of self-care as well as just the basics of connection, right? We just got through talking about like how crucially important it is for us to take care of ourselves. Um... And so just keep those things in mind as we talk about the importance of connecting with ourselves as a woman in terms of taking care of ourselves and connection, right? So let's start with connection. Listen, if you can't connect with yourself, like really connect with yourself, how do you expect to connect with your child? Now, listen, I know that either went over your head or you might be rolling your eyes, you know what I'm saying? and being like girl what are you talking about but listen listen this is where my clinical perspective kind of like comes into this question so i'm gonna ask this question again and then i'm gonna gonna just give you just a snippet of just like a clinical perspective right if you can't connect with yourself how do you expect to connect with your child because like human connections And the quality of those connections are all rooted in how we are connected with ourselves, right? So however you connect with a human, whatever the quality is of that relationship with that person really is rooted in the quality of the connection you have with yourself, 
right? Um, and most of us, we know this. Like, you don't, you don't need me as a therapist to tell you that, like, the way you connect with others is the way you connect with yourself, right? Or your ability to love and pour into yourself is a reflection of how you love and pour into your child, right? Um, you don't need me to tell you that, right? But again, the point is ultimately it starts with you, which is why connecting with you is really, really important. And you can connect with yourself through journaling, right? Um, reflecting on the things that you really enjoy to doing as a woman, right? Separate from like partners, separate from being a mom, separate from being like a caretaker maybe of other family members or a friend or, you know, whatever title it is you have at work, if you work from home, separate from all of that, like, how do you connect with yourself? Like, what kind of gets you going? What do you enjoy doing as a woman? For me, it's two things that really help me to connect with myself. Y'all know I be polishing these nails, right? That is something that I do. That's what I do for myself. It makes me feel pretty. It makes me feel good about myself. It helps me to slow down. Um, it just, it does so much for me. And I like really can connect with myself when I polish my nails. I either sit and I just think while I'm polishing my nails. I might play music in the background, which is the other way I connect with myself. I love me some music. Um, and so, you know, I might do that while I'm polishing my nails. I might watch a show or something that I've really been wanting to look at while I polish my nails. But that's how I connect with myself because I'm like feeding into myself. I'm doing the things that I enjoy. Music, like I just said, is another way that I connect with myself because then I start dancing, I start singing, and I'm like f filling myself up, right? These are ways I connect with myself. Um, and it's just me. Like these are things that I can do with just me. I think that's what I mean when I say connect with yourself because what can you do just by yourself? when nobody else is around to just tap in and be like, hey girl, I'm here. How you feeling? Like a real moment of like tapping in with yourself, not having nobody else tap in with you, not expecting nobody else to take care of you or to care for you. What are you doing to connect with yourself, right? That is what is so, so, so important. And so again, ultimately it starts with you. When you can connect with yourself, then you will be able to connect with your kid on an even deeper level if you already feel like you got a deep connection. Um, and it'll just it'll just kind of help things move along. Um, now let's talk about connecting with yourself in terms of self-care, okay? Listen, self-care is null and void if we aren't connected to ourselves because then you're just kind of going through the motions and you really don't know like, are you really not tapped into like the fact that you're not really taking care of yourself if you're not connected with yourself? And so you got to kind of know who you are. You got to get back to who you were. You got to separate from your kids, your partner, your friends, family. And you got to just really, really delve in and tap into you, right? And do things to take care of you. Today, I went and got me a little pedicure. I have been looking for a pair of pants that I need um, to wear because I got some stuff going on and I have not been able to find a pair of pants. I didn't try to find a pair of pants with these kids with me. I didn't try to find a pair of pants by myself, but I was rushing. I didn't try to find a pair of pants when all of us have been out shopping as a family. And today, you know what I said I was going to do? I'm not going straight home after getting this pedicure. I know, I know that folks is probably expecting me to come back home, but I ain't. I'm going to go right over here and make a beeline and I'm going to go into TJ Maxx and I'm going to take my time and I'm going to find me a pair of pants because I want to wear a certain outfit tomorrow and I need a pair of pants to go with the shirt that has been in my closet for like a year, if not two, that got the tags still on it. So I connected with myself and I was like, girl, they going to be okay. Everybody in that house gonna be fine. Your husband gonna be okay. He got the kids. Them kids is gonna be okay. And you gonna be okay. It ain't nothing wrong with you taking an extra 20, maybe 30 minutes to go to the store that's 10 minutes away from the house. What, like, 
what what's the harm in that? But you know, I had to have a conversation with myself because I was connected to myself in that moment. And guess what? I found the pants and everybody was fine. Everybody was fine. Didn't nobody even say, oh, why you took so long? The kids didn't say why I took so long. The husband wasn't thinking nothing about the time. It was all in my head, but I took a moment to connect with myself and realize I needed to do this for myself because this is something that I wanted to do. And that was just important to me. It was something I needed to do on my own as a woman. It was something that I wanted to just accomplish because I got this really cute shirt that I've been wanting to wear for so long. I didn't have no pants to go with it. And so all I'm saying is you got to find ways and pockets to connect with yourself, which in turn, in turn will help you engage in more self-care, right? And th- that's just what we have to do. So listen, that's all I got for y'all today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, I enjoyed being on here and talking with y'all. And by the time this episode uploads, you know, all of this stuff should still be accurate. It should still be this current week where these these things are taking place. I would have worn my outfit <laughs> by the time this episode posts um, because I'm going to figure out how to get this little tiny nuance corrected um, with uploading this episode. But until then, um, I really hope y'all enjoyed today's topic. Please, please, please like leave a review on the podcast and just let me know what you thought about today's episode, how it landed with you. Did it resonate? If you got questions, just let me know. Remember when you leave a review, it really helps other people to find my podcast. So again, Ultimately, when you leave reviews, you're working with me on my mission to help people bloom into their best selves. Don't forget, this is not the only platform that you can connect with me on. You can connect with me outside of my podcast. You can email me. Um, You can DM me on Instagram. Or you can sign up for my free monthly newsletter. All the ways that you can connect with me can be found on my website at www.bloomintoyourbestself.com. And I just really enjoyed talking with y'all today. Um, I really, really did. I hope y'all enjoyed listening. And until the next time we chat, I really hope that you do something that'll help you bloom into your best self.